the, the trade methodology has been used all around the world. So it's a very easy methodology to follow. It's very systematic. Um, it's it's, it's uh, in, in, indeed more prescriptive than you'd find other benchmarking methodologies, which is a good point because it shows you exactly what you need to do when you do a benchmarking project. So it consists of five stages, as you can see here, but underneath each of these stages are steps. So plan the project, identify what you want to do the benchmarking on, review the current situation, acquire best practices, deploy them and evaluate. What I think is not understood is that benchmarking, you know, to me is the most powerful change management tool because normally when you do benchmarking projects, it's set up with a benchmarking team. You have a project team undertaking the project and it it's, it's, it it's helping them on really on a learning journey. And when you do benchmarking project, it's not just involving the project team. The project, project team should be involving all the stakeholders. The stakeholders are responsible for the process. And the customers and suppliers are affected by the process. So benchmarking project is taking the team and all the stakeholders on a learning journey to understand what the problem is, to, to work together on finding best practices, plus also providing their own ideas on what needs to do, be done to improve. And then together deciding then what needs to be implemented and then evaluating the outcomes. So it's, so it's about changing people's mindsets change and, and taking everybody on, on this journey. And this is how you get true innovation because you're involved in your team, you're involved in your stakeholders, it's getting people's ideas, plus also you're visiting other organizations, you're learning totally unique ways of approaching a particular problem. So it's changing ways of thinking, which gives you, let's say, new concepts, new ideas, whether or not you're going to replicate something they're going to do or not. So normally in, in a benchmarking project, you would expect to get between at least 50 to maybe 120 great ideas and best practices. And then it's a matter of sifting through them and prioritizing them, which ones you're going to implement. So this is where you get fast change, quick wins, breakthrough wins, breakthrough changes. Um, absolutely fantastic. So uh, in the last few words, I've been working predominantly um, on benchmarking in the UAE, working with the Dubai government. I've helped uh, with the Dubai government support facilitate 34 projects. Actually, many more projects have been undertaken than that. So also worked independently with organizations as well. Um, but, but these are examples of benchmarking projects. Some are really big, which are gonna have societal changes in the UAE. Other ones are more specific. So a big project would be, for instance, about addressing the prevalence of diabetes in the community. So reducing the likelihood of people getting diabetes through um, you know, having a healthier uh, lifestyle. Other projects are more specific about just trying to tackle employer happiness within a specific government entity. So it can be big projects or small projects. A uh, recent project last year was looking at um, uh, making Dubai the self safest place in the world to have a heart attack. So if you look at Copenhagen and Seattle, your survival rate from a heart attack outside hospital is 65%. In most countries like in New Zealand, in the UAE, it'd be between five to 10%. And so this project is learning from best practices around the world. So ultimately Dubai will be even better than Seattle and Copenhagen. So uh, absolutely fantastic life-changing uh, projects. What, I, what I'll do is share with you how we sort of organize a program for this, because you could do a similar program inside your own organization if you're a large organization, or again, we could even think about how we could do something uh, perhaps in New Zealand engaging lots of organizations. Um, most years we have between 10 to 15 projects which we start off at the same time. So. Um, they have to put forward projects and we, we determine which one should, should proceed and be part of the program itself. But they start off with a, with a training program so they all understand what benchmarking is. Then we have a schedule of activities for, for one year. Um, in fact, for this last year in 2019, we only had a nine month program, which is very, very ambitious to be able to manage uh, big projects in such a short time frame but this was because Dubai Expo was planned for 2020 so we need to complete them in nine months. Uh, so this is a schedule you can see training at the start. They all need to submit trade spreadsheets 
as they pursue the project. This is a project management system, so we can monitor the progress of the projects in real time. Uh, uh, we have regular site visit meetings to each government entity, two hours each meeting, understanding more in depth the problem and the issues and how and providing advice and benchmarking. Every two to three months there'd be knowledge sharing summits where all the different teams come together and share their progress with the benchmarking projects. These are fantastic because they're all learning from each other on, on how to do benchmarking, the sharing best practices, and many of them become benchmarking partners for each other too. Um, we also do sp special sharing for and, and activities for team leaders and benchmarking facilitators so they can share experiences uh, as well. And at the end of the year, we have a final knowledge sharing summit and awards day where we have international judges to come to assess the projects and each project as well has got to write a very detailed and comprehensive benchmarking report and, and we assess them. And then six months later, we write a book which shares all the, uh, the case studies from, from, from those uh, projects. So you can see here some photographs from the uh, knowledge sharing summits in Dubai. Um, we can see photographs of some of the activities that we undertake. Um, and you can see that this is the, the trade project management system. It's, we use Excel spreadsheets because everybody's familiar with Excel. And you can see at the bottom of the slide different tabs for the worksheets. Uh, there's over 40 different tabs here, which have really different tools and methods you can use, which will going to assist you when you do a benchmarking project. What you're seeing in front of you now is, is just part of the terms of reference for a project. Uh, you can see here the planning they do for the review stage of trade. It's got the steps associated with each stage on the left hand side and then what they're actually doing. And then this is showing some of the tools they use as part of the benchmarking project, like fishbone analysis, process mapping, best practice selection matrix, etc. So at the end of the year, we assess the projects. For this year in December, when it came to an end, we had three seven star projects and the rest were five, six stars or three to four stars. If the three to four stars, it means they've done a professional job. Uh, and this was very demanding to do in a nine month time frame. Those ones of which are three to four stars, five to six stars, they could still become seven star projects. Uh, it's just at the time of assessing them, they were not seven stars. Some of them needed more time to implement their best practices. What we'd said to all the organizations is that they need to at least have implemented some quick wins by the end of the year. But obviously some are implementing major change programs and needed uh, additional time. So we have Dubai police here, for instance, uh, their project was looking at increasing the security of checked in luggage, which, which, uh, obviously, which, which goes onto the airplanes. And for this particular project uh, now, because of greater security and changes to the process, means now there's less delayed air, uh, airline departures uh, because of security issues, which is saving the airlines 18 million US dollars per year just from this project alone. It also increased the productivity of the, the, the baggage screeners as well. For Dubai municipality, their project was reducing the tendering time from once a tender is issued to issuing the contract. So they reduced their average time from 99 days into 33 days. It's going to go even faster than that, which is saving their organization between 10 to 20 million US dollars per annum. Dubai Corporation for Ambulance Service is trying to be the most innovative uh, ambulance service in the world. So their job initially is just to develop an, an innovation blueprint of what innovation would look like. They can't achieve that in one year. It's going to, they, they set an objective of achieving, by, achieving that by 2021 but they've made great strides to achieving it. They've improved their innovation maturity score from 46% to 64% and received gold accreditation for innovation management. So wonderful achievements by the team. teams. When you see the teams do these projects, you see changes in the individuals because they've never been through such a development program like this. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic initiative to be part of. Uh, to find information on previous projects, again, I've got the links here. So this provides full information on all the projects. And again, in the bpr.com website, you can see presentations on the projects uh, too. Because of the success of uh, the fourth cycle, the, sorry, the third cycle of Dubai, we learn in the previous cycles, um, we were actually not planning to do a fourth cycle this year because of Dubai Expo uh, happening a bit. Uh, we were contacted by Dubai government in April, just uh, uh, last month, 
saying that because they understand the power of the benchmarking methodology, can we do a benchmarking project to assist Executive Council's Crisis and Disaster Management Committee for COVID-19? So uh, we've quickly to put together a benchmarking project um, to assist um, the Executive Council's Crisis and Disaster Management Committee. Um, and, and to do this, we thought, okay, this has got to be a very fast project. It's got to, because you know, the situation's evolving all the time. So the project's going to be about one and a half, two months long. And we really needed people familiar with the trade methodology. So we selected people to be part of this team who have been, who've undertaken a seven star project in the past. And then we're also uh, really selective about the organizations participating as well. Obviously we need organizations like the Dubai Corporation for Ambulance Services, Services, Dubai Health Authority. Also we wanted the Dubai Economic Department, uh, Dubai SME involved as well for the economic recovery, et cetera. So the benefits from doing this project are obviously going to be things like lives saved, health benefits, and obviously faster eco economic recovery. So just to show you the methodology in a bit more detail how we're doing this. So the terms of reference stage, this now is showing you the steps associated with that. Um, in terms of this particular project now, when we, when we started looking at this in a bit more detail, we said we can't have just one benchmarking team. We need five benchmarking teams. And which will be devoted to particular pillars. So we've had five teams focusing on a different pillar, one on crisis management, one on health, because obviously that's a key issue, one on food security and supply chain, one economy and one societal behavior. And we've got set objectives, you know, with, with, with delivery dates of what we need to do working through the trade stage, trade, trade stages. Because the situation is evolving all the time with, with COVID and uh, you, we thought as well, even if, the, if, if the, the government were going to wait for two months for our, our, our response and recommendations, that's going to be too late. So each week we, we elevate some of the, the, the quick wins, the quick best practices back to the crisis uh, 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 committee, to the crisis and disaster management committee. So our, our team leader who's, who's responsible for the whole project is from Dubai Corporation for Ambulance Service. Each, each, each week she, she would report anything really important back to the, to, the, to the crisis team. But ultimately by the 9th of June, we need to complete the whole project and then there'll be um, presentations and uh, benchmarking reports to, to the actual uh, committee. So for the review stage, the review is fully understanding the current situation in Dubai with regards to the management of COVID. So therefore, they have been using techniques like SWOT analysis, fishbone analysis as well. So you can see here this fishbone analysis. This was by the, the crisis management subpillar, and you can see the fish eating a COVID virus. So that's what we're wanting. We don't want any more COVID viruses. And then what, what they do with the SWOT analysis, they do a, a, a fishbone analysis to understand the current situation. On that uh, fishbone analysis, it's broken down the subpillar, they've broken down the pillar, which is crisis management, into five subpillars. So this is the five subpillars that they think are important. Then they break that down then further into a gap analysis for each of the subpillars, thinking what are the current gaps? Because you need to know the current gaps because that'll help you to think about what best practices we need to find out. So when we come to the acquire stage, learning from other organizations, we use a very detailed best practice search form and approach to find best practices. So now they've broken down the pillar crisis management into these five sub pillars. And this is what we're gonna do the searches on, crisis leadership, effective media control, data control and management, effective and efficient utilization communication channel, future foresight and readiness. And you can see we break each of these areas down even further detail into a set of questions. And then we have researchers doing a lot of desktop research or even um, uh, uh, Skype and you know, Zoom meetings to, 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 to talk to other people to find, find, find the best, best practices. My COA researchers have, have supported this uh, as well as the, the, the benchmarking teams in, in Dubai. From my COA researchers, I think, um, each co researcher would write to find about 20 pages of information at least on, on best practices for the particular sub pillar they're, they're looking at. For the sub pillar of health, um, uh, the, 
uh, our researcher found 96 pages of information because there's so much information. So, and all this has been reported back uh, uh, to the benchmarking teams who need to then assess that information. What I just share with you is one of the searches that we did because it's interesting from a New Zealand perspective and it's showing, sh showing that in terms of the crisis management area and in terms of communication, then uh, New Zealand we feel is a particular best practice in terms of how the Prime Minister has been communicating to the public and how the um, Director of Health has been communicating on a daily basis and uh, also through the uh, four phase alert system it's very clear uh, to everybody in New Zealand and this is not the same in all other countries so not all other countries have a, a, a phase sort of a stage system so we thought this this was very powerful best practice which could could be uh, learned, learned from. Um, so, so the five, next stage for the benchmarking teams is to give a presentation, submit a benchmarking report to the Crisis and Disaster Management Committee on the 9th of June 2020. So an awful lot of work is going into that and you can see how we're structuring the benchmarking report as well, where they're going to be sharing the title of the best practice idea, um, um, overview of it, current state, recommendations, expected benefits and impact. And then finally, we'll do an evaluation of how successful the project has been. We'll do an internal evaluation and also get, this, get the feedback from um, um, the, the Committee of Crisis Disaster Management team itself. 